All righty, let's, uh, let's jump in, get started uh, for today. So glad uh, you guys could all join in today. If you have questions, pop them in chat, unmute yourselves, casual, just uh, we'll go through what we, uh, what we can get through today. Uh, so I wanna just uh, take a few minutes, go through the markets uh, with you. Well, we know where we are for the day, but I want to uh, just give some really basic technical analysis on some things. We're just gonna use the futures here. Uh, hopefully this isn't like too much stuff, but what I did was I took all my indicators, I stuck them on one screen uh, instead of having a different tab for everything that I'm doing uh, here today. So it, it certainly makes things a lot more uh, cluttered, but hopefully you can still see it uh, as well on your screen. If you can't, we'll go back and, and take a look at the other way. So let's take a look at ES today. We'll look at ES futures uh, as we go and I went back uh, here. So the FIB levels from the high back in January, uh, when we hit the, the high here, all the way to the lows uh, in June, the FIB levels are on in there. And mine are always color coded. So the 50% retracement is always this blue. Uh, the 3864s are in green, and then the rest are in red, primarily because those these are the most important ones uh, to me. So if we Zoom in, take a look at ES and, and where we are. We've obviously come all the way up to this downtrend line that we established back at the high of the year that we bounced off of once, and then we hammered it again, which also happened to correspond uh, to be the 60, or I'm sorry, the 200 day moving average yesterday. So we hit that downtrend line and we hit the 200 day yesterday and got smacked when we hit it and then sold off pretty well today. Uh, does it mean that all we do is go down from here? Not, not necessarily. However, let's take a look at where we are and let's use, I don't get to use these tools all the time. So um, let me take a look and pull up some annotation stuff on here. Uh, but as, as you take a look at the market, uh, look at the, the different indicators that we have. So these white dots, is the PSAR um, technical on here. And when the PSAR dot hits a candle, we got really close here. As soon as it really hits a candle or a candle hits the dot, which is the uh, PSAR signal line, when it hits that, it usually signals a reversal. So you can see here, lines, you know, we were in a bullish mode, things were moving bullish until the candle came down, hit the PSAR, and then we switched to bearish mode. Uh, for a couple of days, then uh, really we switched right back to bullish. And we've been bullish for a while. So we, we triggered bullish uh, back here on, you know, about 718, 719, uh, right in that time, uh, time frame. So that's where, uh, that's where we banged off of that. And obviously this has all been moving upward here, but you're really close here to triggering a reversal on the PSR, which is a bullet bearish move as well and then you're right back to this 50 percent line so we did break the 50 but only for a couple of days we're back to it now we could bounce off that 50 and then rock it higher so it's possible that we take this and we run it back up uh to that 4500 mark or something like that so we're in a, a tough spot for the market here but if you look at rsi <laughs> and stochastics in them here if you look at some of those things you can see uh, that we are starting to flip over a bit on there. I'm just muting a couple of you guys. So uh, if you're not muted, try to mute yourself. But, uh, you know, one down day doesn't mean a whole lot. But if you look at the overall trend uh, here, you now this was the high on the MACD. And since then, it's really been down a couple of days of up, but really just keeps trending down. RSI and stochastics have been sideways, but tipping over today. Squeeze usually lasts about eight days. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then it typically tips over on average. Doesn't mean that's a hard and fast rule, but here's where it told you this might be the end of the momentum. Doesn't mean we don't go higher, which obviously we did uh, here, but it was all tipping over here, maybe we start to tip over here uh, as well. On the stochastic momentum, we're overbought or yeah, we're overbought up in here above the line. 
What we need to see though, is we need to see us break this, um, this line, break the 40. So uh, still we can stay overbought and stay up here. You know, we've been overbought since the middle uh, you know, of July. Uh, so you've been overbought for quite a while, but you keep running higher. So as long as it stays up here, we're pretty good. As soon as it starts to break, here is typically when we start to see stuff heading lower on those on those breaks. And most things start to correspond here on this same downtrend line. And then the CCI is just something else I, I utilize. What I like to see is the CCI hit 200, which it did right here. And then if it breaks down through this 100, then momentum's pretty pretty good that we're moving downside. So we haven't broken anything major yet here. So we're teetering. We could turn tomorrow and, and run higher. So don't get too excited. We can turn higher today for all I know. Uh, but don't get too excited. But keep an eye on this. When we get oversold to this 100 or 200 level and we break up, it's usually a good time. Okay, that was here. And we, and we ran. So that's usually a nice little indicator to use. Again, we were overbought here, crashed down through here. That was the time to get in. And you watch this thing just go all the way down to oversold. So that gives you a, uh, a pretty good indication of, of what's going on. So uh, there's a bunch of uh, squiggly lines for you to try to figure out. Uh, we're really at an inflection point here and we'll see what happens uh, on ES um, as we go through. Um, if we're looking at RTY, same type of thing. Uh, you know, you've been you know way way overdone on the squeeze firing. You know, for a while now. So this thing is just way overdone. Are we starting to tip over? I don't know. It's the same looking thing as ES. We could reverse tomorrow. PSR reversal. We might be hitting, you know, our our maximum spot here. Who knows? Until again, in my opinion, and again, this is this is all my opinion, uh, and, uh, and and nothing else. But as soon as you really start to to break these lines, so this has to break here, this has to break here. Okay, when those break, it's a pretty good sign. Okay, that this thing's going lower. But you got to wait for the break, and we'll see. But we are definitely overbought. We haven't turned lower. We can stay up in this range for a while and keep just meandering higher, uh, but pretty strong opportunity today to see what's happening. And then NASDAQ, pretty much the same thing. We didn't quite get to the 200 here, but everything looks about the same uh, on it, but we haven't broken down in here yet like we did back in here. Um, and again, I did not change the annotation from one chart to the next, look at the same thing on all of these charts. Okay, it, we haven't, you know, we broke here. So we didn't break yet, not time to, to signal the all sold and that we're never going uh, higher again. Uh, so let me clear these off and you don't have to look at those anymore, but there it gives you a little bit of a sense of the market and what we're doing here. I think just a big inflection point in here that we could bounce and go higher. We need to see some follow through here to see if this is gonna head down at least to the 21 EMA or worse um, on things. So if nothing else, it's a nice little relief for some of our calls that we have on uh, today. So it's a quick overview of the market. Let's take a look at a few uh, of the other stocks. Let's take a look at stuff we like to trade a lot. Uh, so here's oil. Uh, you know, oil has definitely been, you know, either in a squeeze sell or a sell. MACD's been low here. It looked like we were making the move here to crack higher, you know, and trigger bullish, but we still haven't done that yet. Uh, we still remain, you know, oversold. So a little fake out here. This would have been the time to get long potentially and really hasn't happened. Uh, PSR is still quite a ways away from that candle. so. We've really got to either move sideways quite a bit more, or we've got to make a little run up to 93 or so um, before oil uh, triggers a buy. Uh, so uh, side more sideways, 
And Igor, I think, mentioned this in the Slack channel. You know, how do you resolve some of these things? It's either time, we go sideways until we hit some of these triggers, or B, price, the price moves higher and, and triggers it. So we're waiting. We've either got time or price that we got to watch. The nice thing for us is as premium sellers, you know, the time is on our side. We just keep collecting money every day that this doesn't do anything. Um, and what I want to do also quickly on ES here is I wanted to point out the weeklies. So let's take a quick look at the weekly chart. And what do you see weekly? You see a pretty good bullish move. I mean, this triggered right in here um, that we were solid on the on the weekly move. As soon as we, you know, oversold, hit the 200, didn't make it, didn't make it right there. We made it. Okay, Stomo was pointing up. TTM squeeze reversed higher, MACD a few days later. Uh, and then PSAR triggered a buy signal here on the weekly back in 725. So we are in a buy mode on the weekly, which is more powerful than the daily, which is, makes me think that, yeah, maybe we'll come back down in here somewhere. Maybe we'll bounce off the 21 and then we could see it moving higher. So I don't know that the end of, you know, days is here of, of the rally. We could break through this. The weekly is saying pretty strong, uh, but maybe it's had its run and that's all it'll do. So we'll keep an eye on. We haven't really settled on anything particular yet. If we look at some of the indexes, um, you know, technology looks, I could have left those annotations on. It looks the same. Maybe it's starting to crack here on technology. And we've had several down days on technology and the uh, healthcare that's been meandering and overbought it here for a bit nothing uh, nothing to see here just move along and it's still in a bullish mode on healthcare uh, on consumer discretionary your amazon your tesla your home depot uh, your mcdonald's that's your discretionaries here a little bit of a weakness tipping over here. We'll see what happens. It's all a matter of follow through. Uh, here's communication, looks the same. Uh, now, on biotech, the story's a little bit different because you've already started to see us cracking um, this piece in here. So you've, you're already starting to see potentially a little crack in the armor um, on, on biotech. Maybe this is a precursor. Is this tipping over? I don't know, not enough yet, but this is definitely cracking through. This is starting to crack down from that two, over the over 200. It's a really good short signal uh, here. And then PSAR, we're about to touch it. So we could see uh, a little bit of a biotech. This might be a time to potentially be selling off biotech. If it doesn't hold this 21 EMA, um, you got a good chance that biotech may be uh, maybe about to tip. Uh, so biotech may be leading the fray. Financials starting to tip, but nothing major yet on financials. This is what's driving, by the way, this financials, this move is driving, you know, rut. So this is what's what's driving rut higher, these financials. And then energy, maybe a little crack in the armor on energy, but still ways away from where you know where I would be worried about you know big tip over uh, potentially so uh, there's a good handful of the indexes and then let's take a look at oil and gas quickly uh, oil and gas quite a ways away from a piece of reversal but looking like potentially it could tip over so some are up some look decent technology looked decent but really in an inflection point in the in the process. And then you've got retail here looking strong, but showing some signs here. The weeklies on everything look fantastic, but the daily charts eh, looking like we need a pullback, but I don't know that it means a pullback to June lows. Uh, all right, and that's really what I want to cover on markets today. We'll get into individual stocks in a little bit uh, as we go through. And I wanted to touch base on some Greeks today and really have a chance to show a whole lot. But in my portfolio, 
uh, on it. And let's let's switch to the Income Navigator portfolio for a few minutes, and we'll take a look at um, at what's going on. I can't really pull my account up on here, give too much away. But uh, when we take a look at uh, at this account, we've got. I'm going to use the annotation tool a bit. Um, in fact, I'll, I'm going to pop it in here. So for this account, we have a delta. Um, as of yesterday, it was about minus 800 and some. Today, it's down to about minus, I think it's like 500 or something on the delta. So you've got like a negative 500 delta uh, on here. And then our theta uh, for this account is somewhere around 850 theta, and then our net lick here is, uh, I think it's 215-ish today. I think that's up pretty good today. So I think we're up five grand today alone. Uh, so, and then Vega on this account, I, I can't remember what it was, but it's pretty close to 3,200 negative on Vega. Um, so as you, uh, as you take a look at some of the things on here, when we look at these numbers, a couple ratios that I'd like to follow. And again, Igor, I know you've got some ratios that, that you like. Um, and I'm not a huge, I mean, I, I do follow some tasty trade stuff, but not a big, not a lot. But one thing that um, Tom, Tom Sosnoff and I talked about uh, a couple of years ago, we used to talk quite a bit more, but on Delta, he was always telling me 200 to 400 short Deltas, I'll put an SD, um, for every 100K in your account. Um, so are your, you know, 200 to 400 short, he likes short Deltas. I don't care if they're positive or minus, to be honest with you, you can actually get rid of um, some, some of that stuff is you don't need the short Delta piece, but 200 to 400 Delta per every hundred K in your account short being good. So I've got a $215,000 account that we're running here for income navigator. At least that's what it's up to. Now we started with 30 grand and I've got 500 negative deltas today. Obviously it was higher yesterday before we sold off. Well, that's definitely in this range of being somewhere between 400 and 800 on a $200,000 account. So I'm definitely right where I like to be. I'm totally happy with this number uh, in here. So my Delta that I look for, and I, I stick to, I stick to what Tom, you know, selected back then. And I, I still like that piece is 200 to 400 Delta per every hundred K in your account. I think that's a good number. Theta, and this is a, you, know, you probably get about a hundred different pieces of information depending on who you listen to. Simply for me, I just like it at twice my Delta um, or somewhere in there, or and Igor, this may be high for what you say. So I don't remember Igor, what you used in the past, but 0.4% um, of net lick to me. Uh, now that may be high for some of you and Igor, that may be high uh, for what you've talked about in the past. I don't know. Obviously I'm not as maybe conservative as some people should be, um, but there's a, a sense of what my theta typically looks like. And then let's talk about a theta to Vega ratio a of at least 0.2 or more, um, or 4x theta. Why does this keep stopping? Um, we'll put this plus here. So those are some ideas of numbers. Again, I, I don't adjust every day. I'm not worried about everything every single day, uh, but um, I, do, I do keep a rough eye on these things as, as we go. Uh, so my, this is what I'm looking for. Um, and so yeah, looking at your daily income goal, Eddie. So that's what we're gonna get to next because you asked me the question, 
Oh, let me let some people in. Uh, so Eddie, you, you asked a question. How's my, uh, you know, how's that match up with like the 25% uh, that Tasty uh, Trade talks about of capturing 25% of their theta? Um, I think it actually comes out pretty, pretty close to, to be honest with you. So let's take a look. I'm gonna maybe move this thing over here a bit. And uh, we'll do so. We'll, we'll we'll pop some of these things in here. I'm going to do one more, uh, one more piece in here. So I'm always looking for three to four percent ROI um, annual. That's my goal. I just I just want to make, you know, I don't even want to put the four percent. Let's just say three percent on bigger accounts, smaller accounts, four percent. You know, you want to do hundred percent or ten percent, knock yourselves out. But I want three percent a month. Uh, on my account. That's what that's what I would like to make is 3% a month. That's my goal. If I do that, it's going to give me 30 to 33% annual. Um, so there's really a, a goal for me is I, that's what I want to make. I want to make 3% a month, 33% annual. And I just want to be consistent about that. Can you, you know, last year I made 60%. Great. I beat my goal. Um, I don't really care. This year I'm at 33%. You know, maybe that's where I'll end up. Maybe we'll go higher. We've got a lot of time left. If we do things right and smart, we're going to be in good shape um, for that. So we, we can we can beat it. But 3% a month. So 3% a month, if you're looking at that, let's take my $215,000 account. Well, it was 215 today, but let's just use that. Okay, times 0.3 uh, here. So on a $215,000 account, and you want to make 3% a month, I want to make around $6,000. A month. So that's my that's my goal is to make six thousand dollars a month. If my theta is eight hundred and fifty, and again you can tell me if you think I'm calculating this this wrong. And again, I'm not. I'm not. I don't get wrapped up in these things, but I do think they work. If I have twenty trading days, I'll just call them twenty trading days to make six thousand dollars. Okay, so I have 20 trading days to make $6,000, okay? So what is, that's $300 a day is going to equal 6000 a month, okay? If my theta is around eight 900 here, then probably 0.3, uh, you know, theta capture. So, Eddie, I, I think that 25% is not, terribly bad. Um, I think I'm probably higher a higher theta capture with my trades than than tasty you know than tasty says uh, but I think I'm in the ballpark with my theta at 850. I think my premium capture is almost 50 percent uh, on most style trades 100 percent on 112. so my my theta capture is really high. I think if my theta is if I'm capturing 50 percent, as long as my theta is at least 600 bucks for probably what I'm doing, I'm probably in good shape. I mean, there's losses in there that you're probably going to take and there's gains over that. But I think if you get that 0.3% or, or something along those lines, um, I think that it makes sense. So I think my theta is in line with what I want. When I look over here, my delta is in line plus or minus 500, anywhere in that is fine. I like the negative. If I can be negative, I will be right now. I don't want to be negative when, you know, when things are more positive out there, but I, I want to be negative a little bit right now at these highs. So my delta is in my range. I think my theta is definitely twice my delta. I think I'm in range there or 0.4% of my net lick is 800, I think. So uh, that's pretty good. So 215,000 times 0.4, it's going to give me, you know, 860 or, or whatever. So I think that's, I think I'm right there. My theta vega is a little, a little off, but it's, you know, 4x. That's pretty much 4x. Uh, so I'm, I'm really not paying super close attention, but I felt right in line with these numbers. And I'm falling right in line with my goal to make $300 a day for 20 days, 20 trading days a month, giving me six grand a month 
which is my 3% goal, and I'm in pretty good shape. Make sense? Yay or nay? Sounds good. Uh, so I think that's a good, a good thing to take a look at. In fact, I like a little bit of, of what we got here. So I'm going to actually take this. And I'm going to screen capture it. So, uh, and I'm going to save that uh, screenshot. So, all right. So I captured that. I just want to have that for posterity's sake. So I hope this um, hope this makes sense. Um, and you know, obviously BP. I want it fifty percent. I don't really talk about it here, but the, you know, my buying power should be fifty percent. This is probably a little. I mean. I'm, you know, I'm probably a little higher than I normally would be, but the account's growing. So now I, you know, this numbers have got to grow and it's harder. The bigger your account gets, the whole, um, yeah, it doesn't matter if Vegas negative. Well, yeah, being a premium seller, Vegas is always going to be negative. So when you sell premium, Vegas is negative. So yeah, I'm looking at that as a, um, uh, an absolute value. I mean, I know it's a negative. It's going to, my Vegas is going to be negative. Um, I just, I need my, um, you know, theta is the ma my major driver, not price. So that's why my theta uh, has to be um, has to be decent because I want my delta theta ratio at two times here. I need this to be closer to two times delta because if if not, if delta is higher than or closer to theta, they're closer to equal. Now price is my driver and not decay. Well, I'm a premium seller, so I need a much higher um, theta than delta. I need a 2x delta in my portfolio so that I know that theta is the driver of my portfolio, not price. If I'm an active trader and I'm buying calls uh, and trading that way, then absolutely I want my delta to be maybe half of my, you know, to be twice my theta, I should say. So I want my delta to be equal or less. Uh, so yeah, if I want to increase theta, I'm going to have to sell more more premium. I got I got to keep selling premium to increase that if I want my decay to be there um, on it. So it, it then the bigger your account gets, the harder it gets to keep up with the you know to keep trading theta without putting on a lot of these spec trades, or you're going to be increasing size and risk. Um, yeah, and you can absolutely, you know, as, as Igor said, yeah, you can sell theta closer to at the money um, because your delta is going to be lower. Uh, so I can lower my, you know, I can increase my theta, my decay, um, and sell my, you know, sell my premium closer to at the money and get a, a much bigger decay, uh, much greater theta. Uh, so that's something to take a look at. So yeah, Igor, great, great point is, uh, so closer to at the money and the closer to at the money, you know, you get the better off you're going to be. So I'm going to take these things off of here. And just give you, here's a, a, a good example. We're just going to go 30 days. So if you look at 30 days and if I'm going to sell, you know, what's my, you know, what's my theta going to, going to look like if I'm selling at, you know, a 20 Delta, you know, so what's you know what's theta here you know for me you know and then 1.149 and then if I move this closer you know my theta is going up so as I get closer and closer like a 30 delta okay you know it's it's 20 percent higher so your 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 theta the closer you get to at the money the closer you're going to get the higher your theta is going to go uh, and it's going to change your ratio as you as you move through that uh, so it gives you a little sense of how you can manage through things a, a bit uh, so let's take a quick look um, so there's a little bit on greeks hope that's helpful and i want to walk through a couple trades and i wanted to spend time because there's a couple questions i'm only giving you my way of doing it this is not the rod engel the gabriel saints this is not the igor way this is not uh, any of my other trading guys that I deal with, this is just my way of doing an iron fly daily, uh, which is probably pretty similar to most everybody. It's really hard to do it at this point in the day, but we're going to do it anyway. So you can see here's the activity today. 
Um, so I entered both an iron fly here and an iron condor, one DTE. So zero DTE, one DTE. And then I closed both of those for $1.50 winners, the only trades I have on today. So if I was going to put that on today, now again, obviously it's late in the day, but um, you're, you know, if you're doing the iron fly, you're selling in, at the money. Uh, typically, if it's you got, and the only game that you play is, man, do I actually sell this strike or this strike? Which one do I? And sometimes that can be the difference between winning and losing. Uh, you may have a opinion on where the market's going to go that day. I try to have no opinion um, and just be mechanical. But I would sell these two. Twenty seventy five is my premium. Now, obviously, earlier today, it was 26. Um, but right now, it's 2075. Then I at least double my wings with a minimum of 50. So if I was using these as 50 wings, I'd be down here 50 points lower. I'd be up here 50 points higher. And that would be my iron fly uh, that I would be selling. This is ES. I guess we should probably not do ES. Um, now that's going to do is get you guys excited to start doing these in ES, um, and I cannot be responsible for that. Um, but it works in ES as well, by the way. Um, but it's a little scarier. Um, so let's go down here and go up here. Uh, so this is what you know. This is our um, our iron fly right now. Uh, I'm 50 wide. And the one thing that Jim Olson had, had mentioned is, can you go, you know, for every, was it 10 points wider or for every strike wider, can I get a dollar more? So this 1970, if I go out a little further, 1990, you know, and I, I really can't get more. It's not giving me more than a dollar here, so it's not worth it. You can. I'm not saying don't do it. Uh, but you know, at some point there's a diminishing return on the width of your wings that they just don't give you much more, except obviously my buying power here is 3,000. If I go out wider, my buying power is 3,500. If buying power is a concern, it's something to look at. If you're doing five contracts, I only did one today. I, I was in the middle of a meeting and I didn't have time to, to monkey around. Uh, but it's fine. I don't mind doing one contract a day on two different things, making 300 bucks a day, because 300 bucks a day is my goal for the month. So I made 300 bucks today, no matter what the market's doing. And the market's actually perfect for us today. So we're having a great day. Anyway, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, yeah, $10 is every $10 move. Uh, I think in the strikes, if you don't get $1 more credit, uh, then don't, don't do it. I like 50. I usually stick with 50, but I'm okay going with 60, um, but I will double whatever this is and then round up. That's how I usually do it. Um, I don't sit there and monkey with, oh, can I go, well, I just want to get in the stupid thing. And as soon as I place the trade and the trade gets placed in my account, I just do an opposite order. I subtract $1.50 and I hit review and send and that's it. So it's automatic once I'm in uh, to this trade on these iron flies. Um, it, I, I just set it and forget it, and it's automatic. I do watch the stop loss piece myself, and I'll watch those, uh, and I'm looking for the break even. If I took in $26.10, and this is where I opened it at my center strike, then it's the $26.10 from here. So at $42.96, okay, if it moves up, I'm, and that's where my stop is. Okay? My stop is my credit plus my initial strike or my center strikes. So that's my stop. And then I, I'm pretty mechanical. Can you place a new trade you know, at that break even when you get stopped out? You can. Um, that was a Jim Olson thing. I don't do it. Um, I think it works 50% of the time. I just don't like to pile on my, you know, take your loss and go home. Uh, it's a 75 to 80% winning trade. So when you put these things on, here and you're placing these trades, you know, you're, uh, it's a 50% winner either way, but my, you know, my chances here um, of this typically typical win rate for these is around 75 to 80%. Um, all right, so 
adding these same strike tranches. All right, this is a personal thing that I do, and I see Rod does it as well. For me, I can't tell you it's mechanical, but if I put this trade on at $26.10 and I do my opposite order and I have that order working in there today, and if I see that trade going the wrong way for at least a buck, or so I'm going to put on a second trial. I usually open with lower, like this is a one, a one credit trade. And because I do both a one DT and a zero, I typically just stick with one for my size. I don't, you can do five, you can do one, you can do three. I don't care. It's fun money to me. Okay. You made enough money. I made 300 bucks today doing nothing in 10 minutes or 15, 20 minutes. Fine. I can book a flight and go down and see Gabe. Uh, in Florida next week. So that's really what I do is I just I make some money and I just bulk, get on a, an airplane next week and I go somewhere. Um, so it's fun money. Now, Rod, I know it's a big part of his his account and his account's up 40% because of it. If I was doing more of these, it probably could add to my account. If I increase my size, it could add to more of my account. But my tranche is if it's going the wrong way, I might do it. But let me throw some caveats. Now we're going to get in the weeds here. Let's look at why would I do something that potentially is going the wrong way. Okay, now we're going to go back over here and I'm going to play miniature day trading analysis guy. And I'm going to look at a grid that I have set up. And we're going to focus in on this thing a little bit here. And let's look at what the market's doing because i know this is a 20 minute trade for the most part right i mean very rarely are you in this thing for an, an hour uh, and if you're in an hour it's time to probably start to get out for a buck or get out or something but an hour so an hour to me is a short period of time and i'm looking at over here this is a 15 minute chart so what are we doing on the 15 minute if this, where's the open? Um, you know, 9.30 this morning. Here's the open, okay? And we started selling off okay, at the open this morning. Uh, so we started selling off here a bit at, at, at the open at 9.30. I have to go out a little further here. And then what were we doing here at 9.30? So here's 9.30 and we'll just go to 11. So here's what the market was doing. So over here, we were in a selling channel. Over here, we were going higher. I'm looking at the stochastic momentum on the one minute because I, I know it can change, but it usually changes. Here is 9.30. Here's, you know, in 15 minutes, it usually goes from overbought to oversold to overbought to oversold to oversold to overbought from overbought to oversold. And this one took, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so. It's taking like 15 minutes to do that. So if I think, and this is the funky part, if I think we're just going to hell in a handbasket, and this is pointing down from oversold at 930, which it wasn't, it was like dead center stochastic momentum. And over here, it was just kind of just rotating around. It was a little positive here. It didn't give me any feeling that we wouldn't potentially reverse. Uh, so I know that's it's funky, but I'm I might take a look at these charts to see. I mean, this is to me this is easy day trading. I just buy here, I sell here, I sell here, I buy, I, you know, or I you know, sell short, buy long, buy long, sell short, sell short, buy long, buy long, sell short, or and close out. Uh, you know, can you make some money doing it? You, maybe you can, I don't know. But uh, I'm just looking at this to give me a sense of, is my iron fly going, you know, what's the volume looking like? The volume from 930, what did it do? It only went one direction and that's go to hell in a handbasket. Volume right now is barely on life support. So there's like no, there's no real volume on anything. Hey, are we going to head up? Well, we might head up, but we aren't doing it on any strong volume right now. And if I look over here on the one minute, okay, we're squeezed shorting, but you know, there's really not much volume uh, on it. But this is an area. So we crossed here positive, and we're about to cross positive here, even but the squeeze hasn't triggered yet. 
this might be an interesting spot to buy long. But I kind of use these things to get a sense of, is it makes sense on my iron fly to do stupid things like doubling your, your, your tranches. So if it moves by a buck, I'll take a look to see, do I think it's going to continue to go against me or is it just bouncing around? If I think it's going against me, I may not do it. I'll let my stops go. If I think it's going to recover, it gives me a chance to average in right around the time that I'm hoping this thing's going to reverse and go the other way. So I'm averaging in as we go up. And then, because I'm thinking we're getting close to overextended, if the mark, if, if I'm, if it's going up, I'll average in here because I think here it's going to turn on me. And when it turns, I make some money. I hope this makes sense. So, um, but yeah, adding that tranche as risk is, as Rob put out there too. So now it's doubling the amount of risk that you're taking in it. But because I'm entering such a, for me, I'm entering one contract uh, and I'm just living on one contract. And my only time I go to two is if it, you know, typically goes against me, I usually go to two, but because I'm using two different zero DTE trades, I'm all good. Um, I, I don't care because I make my, you make your money either way. But you can certainly increase your size and that's totally fine. Uh, but if it goes, the day you increase your size is the day it usually goes against you. And that usually wipes out like six trades. All right, the next thing I want to touch base on is the one DTE trade. Uh, so I'm doing the one DTE trade. I'm not using the AM expiration. I'll use the standard end of day expiration on one DTE. I will go to 20 Delta with a 100 wide. So that would be 4130. And then I'll go out here to roughly 20 Delta and 4415. And if it has it, which it does, and there you go. I can put this trade on right now, and there's a one DTE trade. And you can do it now. I still have some time left in this day for this thing to decay um, if it doesn't move. But I'm looking for a buck fifty out of this thing as well. And I like to get in these within the first fifteen minutes or so. This one is not as urgent to get into in the first couple minutes as I think the fly is. You get that that uh, initial two or initial two to five minutes volatility is higher, giving you more premium, making the decay easier. This one, because it's one DTE and I have all of today and technically all of tomorrow for it to decay, the rush to get in in five minutes isn't necessarily there. So it's the second trade I put on, but there's, that's how I meant, you know, that's how I do it. I'm looking for a buck 50 winner and I'm looking for a $3.20 loser. Okay, at 3.20, I'm out. There's other people that have different, you know, things that they're doing. I don't know if it's 4% or 5 I don't know what they're doing. I have no idea. It's just what I've figured out. Uh, for me is $3. Why not $3? Why, you know, $3.20 gives me a little bit of extra room. And one bad only wipes out two goods. Um, but this has been an extraordinarily good trade. But everything's been a good trade when VIX is down, you know, around this 20 mark to to. 30 mark and, and that anything there has been pretty good. So one DTE this year been really good. Uh, so people are making some good money. All right, um, so we just spent a lot of time on one DTE and stuff. So now there's a couple of people that asked me some questions on some stocks. So let's take a look at some stocks and a couple ideas uh, that you guys had. And one of the stocks here was Pepsi. Um, so what's Pepsi uh, looking like? So if I'm looking at Pepsi uh, here, it's bouncing around this all time, uh, at least this recent high. So let's take a look from the top down on Pepsi. What do we see on Pepsi? Well, right now we've got the eight, the 21, the 50, and the 200 all stacked. That's a really bullish sign. You've got PSAR trotting upward and quite a ways away. So we're nowhere near a PSAR reversal in the stock. Um, so I don't think it's reversing lower necessarily for a bit. Now, it doesn't mean that this thing is always 100% you know, right, because here it reversed and, and still went higher a, a bit on you. But it's just one thing I'm looking at. But I'm, we're, look how close it was in here that 
this thing really started to stop going up when it gets close. When it's far away, you're moving higher. Uh, so it's just a good thing to, to look at. I just look at the distance between, like here's I starting to get a little sketchy. We were getting closer. And then we meandered sideways and then we started pulling away again. We got high. Okay. Then now let's look now at MACD. MACD moving higher. So if you're picking out whether this is a, a good opportunity to do something in here, you know, PSAR is moving higher and the distance on the on the piece are is pretty wide that's pretty good okay moving averages are stacked it's a lot it's pretty far away though from the 21 i usually like to see if it bounces off that's using my signal to to want to buy something uh but macd is moving up stochastics and rsi are moving up and they're both over 50 which is important for me i want to see them both over 50 TTM squeeze is moving up, okay? Now it's getting long in the squeeze here. Stochastic momentum is pointing up. It's overbought, but it's not tipping over. CCI is just staying in this overbought range here. So would you, you know, would I do, you know, would I buy Pepsi right now? Is this something that I would, would put a trade on? I think um, the question, Eddie, was, um, I don't know what kind of a trade you were looking to put on in C in Pepsi. Uh, was it a broken wing butterfly or something? I, I, I don't have my notes in front of me of, of what you were looking at. But Pepsi is definitely in a bullish mode, but it's getting a bit overextended, in my opinion. Um, now, Bollinger Bands are still open, so it could still go higher. I think the opportunity was here. Uh, you know, honestly, this was the opportunity to go higher. CCI is the uh, uh, commodity um, is the commodity index um, feature. It's, so the CCI index is the um, uh, commodity index calculator or whatever. So, um, and uh, that's typically what I'm looking at there. So it's the uh, commodity index. Uh, anyway, um, and it's, it's helpful for stocks, not just commodities or something like that. So what would you do here? I don't know on Pepsi. So not 100% sure what I would do on Pepsi at this point. You could get long with a broken wing butterfly. To me, I would want a low risk trade. So I would want to do something that's low risk. And what would that be? I don't know. Let's take a look. I'm just giving you my take. And, Ed, and uh, I don't remember what the initial trade idea was on Pepsi. So let's look, look at the different things we could do. It's a little extended. So to me, this is not a great place to sell puts because you're way far away from the 21 and moving higher. So to me, it's a high risk trade. If I was selling puts and I wanted to get my, you know, 10% or, or so, yeah, it's not bad. You know, I would need to go somewhere around I need to go somewhere in here to even consider selling puts. That's not enough return for me um, on on risk. So a dollar seventy seven um, income, which I'm only going to get half of that because I close at fifty percent on three thousand uh, dollars. It's six percent, so I guess six percent not bad. Considering I'll get a three percent return, but a buck seventy five. I don't know that I want to be that tight. So I'm probably not selling puts on this thing. So what am I going to do? If I'm doing butterflies, I like my butterfly around the $12, 12 DTE range. So I'm really in between this 916. If I wanted to do it here, I like the, uh, the ratio of a 10-5 butterfly um, here. So that might be something take a look at and the 10 five what does that mean is if I go 10 wide on the lower end and five wide on the upper end of the butterfly so this would be a butterfly that I would potentially put on here um, this isn't bad on Pepsi um, so if I'm taking a look at this butterfly I'm spending a dollar 56 okay here uh, quite making what I would like to make on it. But uh, 
this is a, ooh, I did Yeah, I can't really, yeah. So it's, this is five wide and then two and a half. So again, it's that one to 0.5 ratio or two to one ratio, uh, whatever. But the bottom part to me is twice the size of the top spread uh, when I'm doing these butterflies, when I'm doing broken wing. And when I take a look at this particular one, is this enough? I'm I'm spending a buck fifty six, and I always look to see can I get twice as much in here, or is this dollar fifty six, fifty percent of this width, which is two and a half? It's not far off, so maybe not a bad move. So if I was doing a broken wing butterfly, I might consider this one, uh, if that's my, if that's my trade, um, on this. So I'm I'm doing something low risk because I think Pepsi is extended. Um, doesn't mean it can't go higher, but it looks extended to me. Uh, somebody else asked me a question on Lulu. Um, so if we take a look at Lulu as well, and I'm not going back to if he works just be, or uh, to toss. But so Lulu's been moving up. You know, it's a it's getting it's not getting too far away. So Lulu looks pretty decent uh, here as well. So as I'm looking at Lulu. It's getting close to the PSR reversal here, but squeeze is starting to fire. It's overbought, potentially tipping over. MACD is not really strong. So Lulu's not something that I think is, I'm, I'm not super bullish on. You got the 200 here. I'm not really great bullish on it, but it doesn't look like it's terrible. Uh, it might be something. So, how, so what are your options here? I might play a... Um, because I can't tell what Lulu's doing, it's just so blah uh, to me. It's not really firing strong. It looks like it's getting weaker. It's you know to me, I'm you know you could strangle it, and I like the seven deltas for strangles. But I would typically go out more than thirty days. I'd probably go out to forty four days um, on the strangle. <laughs> I'm maxed out at, at what I can do. Um, it's not a bad strangle. Uh, do you think Lulu will stay between 390 and 260 for the next 45 days? And my return is, you know, 560 on margin of 3846, uh, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of 14%. So that's a pretty good, um, a pretty good piece. I might, I, I'd consider a strangle on it if I was doing something. Uh, on Lulu, and those strikes were 260, um, which would, you know, 260 is down here, which is this low. Man, that feels pretty good. And then up here, the high part was uh, 390, which is way up here towards the all time, or at least towards those highs. It's not a bad play for a strangle. So you could strangle uh, Lulu in here. You have earnings coming up, but you know you could strangle Lulu in here. I'm just giving you just some different ways you can play some stocks. The other thing you could do would be, and this was a question that somebody brought up, was what about doing one one twos on stocks? So I think it could go up, but I'm not super convinced about it. I don't think it's going to necessarily crater. And if I look at the weekly chart, which I, I'm not going to keep back. <laughs> But the weekly chart triggered a PSAR buy signal this week and looks decent. So weekly looks decent. Daily looks, eh, little. could I do a, a 112 on this one? So I typically will look for something around that 20 delta. That's where I start. We'll go five wide. So 20 delta, I, it's a dollar 13. Then I could potentially, wow, um, let's do something a little higher. Uh, so let's do the 300, 295 for a buck 25, and I go out to find a buck, but I can't on this thing. So I'd probably sell the 250. I could sell two of those. Okay, now obviously you're selling you're selling two naked puts on Lulu, and depending on your margin, that you know it's a $250. Put. Can you afford that? I don't know. If you've got PM, that's not terrible. Now, taking a look at this trade, here's this. Here's the Lulu one one two. And before we did, I think two sixty was the bottom. And 
the top of that was uh, 390. So 390, this is lower than the 260. So it gives me more downside on Lulu. Um, it's also given me um, on this buying power, um, I'm gonna make $276 if this thing stays bullish. So I make 276 on 5126 in margin again, which is 5%. Uh, 5%. Now, you know, what's my rule? Type it in chat. How much money, how much money do I need to make a month? Who wins the cube? Who wins the crochet bicycle? What do I need to make a month? 3% winner, Eddie. Okay. So can I make 3% a month, which 3% a month means that, uh, every week I need to be making roughly 1%, let's just say. Okay, so this is a 44 DTE trade. Uh, so in 44 DTE, this is a little over a, a month. Um, yeah, yeah, you're getting ahead of me. Uh, so, uh, but on this one here, I'm making 5% return on this particular trade. 5% in 44 days. Well, that certainly gets me to what I need to, uh, to get to. So 5% in 44 days. I try to make you know, 1% every seven days, right? So this has six days. So I really want to make be between five and 6%, but this would give me, um, this really gives it to me here um, on this. Now, if we drop into here, okay? And I'm a little wrong, I've got a cushion all the way down to 245. So 245 uh, from here at 328, uh, that's an $83 drop. Is, is Lulu going to drop $83 in 45 days? And could be, uh, which is a drop of 25%. Okay. Personally, I like this trade, actually. Uh, so I actually kind of like this. Uh, I kind of like this trade. Uh, so I would really consider doing this trade right now. Uh, and, and putting this on in Lulu because I, I like the way Lulu looks. This is how I would do a one one two in Lulu. Can you do other things? Can you do a broken wing butterfly and all? Yeah, you can. And just put this thing on and don't worry about it. And the question for you would be: Are you willing to own shares of Lulu at two fifty? Well, two fifty is the low from March twenty third. Okay, that's the low from March 23rd on Lulu. Um, Lulu, in the last, you would have to go back. You would have to go back to April of 2020 to find that low in Lulu. Uh, so I think, you know, would you own it at 250? Yeah, you probably could. But, you know, if you like Lulu enough, then you'd love it more if you bought it at 250, you could own the shares or you could just simply and wheel it or do whatever you want on it. So uh, I like Lulu here. This is how you trade, in my opinion. This is how I would trade a 112. Let's look at a few other 112 example opportunities uh, in some stocks. Uh, now you have earnings coming up. Inside of that range might be something that you've got to keep an eye on. I don't know why. I have this infatuation with NVIDIA. I mean, I love NVIDIA and I, I'm sad that it's sucking um, because I personally think this is the greatest semiconductor company on planet earth, uh, but it's been getting the, the snot beat out of it. So um, it went from 346 to a buck 50. Okay. This is why I don't own stocks for the long term. Um, so it doesn't really matter to me. I'm a trader, not an investor, but Let's take a look. Um, yeah, we have a uh, we have a trade existing um, on here right now, but let's uh, I, I mocked this thing up earlier. So let's look at a one one two here. Yes, earnings are coming up. They pre-announced. Is there going to be any surprises on August twenty fourth? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Well, let's go forty four days. Let's go to the twenty delta and put on the, a five wide here. Uh, in this thing, it's put on these two. It's a buck thirty. In order to get a buck thirty, I'd probably sell the one forty. I could sell two of those for a dollar seventy four credit. Okay, so a dollar seventy four credit. Let's take a look at how this thing looks. And here's ignore my uh, broken wing butterfly that's out here that's not 
in great shape. But um, here's what this looks like. Let's just actually get that to not. I'm just gonna make you mad. So here's your 112 in NVIDIA. You've got a downside all the way here of $136. Would you own this at 136? 136 is below its lowest point this year. Its low of this year was in early July at 140. This puts my low below that. So will we, you know, will we even be lower than our low? I don't know. It's 44 days. It's not like six months from now. This is a month and a half from now. Uh, I'm making $176. Okay, $176 bucks, and I'm spending $29.30 in margin to do so. So $29.30 in buying power to make a buck 80. Okay, that's a 6% return, which is pretty much the magic number is that I'm always looking for a 6% return in 44 days. Okay, because 44 divided by seven is six, 6%. Um, so I want 1% every seven days. So 1% every seven days for six weeks is 6%. So this hits exactly that. If we land in the trap, it's gonna make a boatload of money. Uh, and we're gonna have a great, you know, usually these are a 300% return, which is about right. Um, so I make a 300% return if it falls in a trap. I make a 6% return if it stands here. And that's not a lot of margin. So, makes sense? Yes or yes? <clears throat> you know what? I like this so much that we're just going to put this trade on. What the heck? Right? You only live once, and we'll put the trade on. We'll see what happens. All right. So, we got that NVIDIA trade working. Who knows? I'll just let it go. If it doesn't go, it doesn't go. Um, any, um, you know, Anything else? Yeah, you know, the question here, you know, the comment in the chat was, yeah, I used to think that stock's going to go so low, and then it showed me that anything can go down. Well, yeah, everything can go down. Every stock goes to zero. Question is, you've got to have a plan, and as long as you have a plan for what to do. Now, my plan when I'm doing these types of trades is, I love Nvidia. So if Nvidia goes to 140, I will buy it with both hands all day long. Do you think Nvidia will be over 140? in a year or two from now. If I need to, I will wheel it until the cows come home, okay? It's usually not my plan to buy it and own it, but I like the, I like the stock. Uh, the other plan would be setting a stop. And the stop on these trades could be the same stops that we used to use on all of our, um, oops, I can't do that because it's working. Uh, Go back to here, it's gonna replace. I just wanna take a look, a look at this and give you a sense. Your stop could also be on an NVIDIA. This is just wacky. Okay. All right, so what would my stop be? Your stop would be your maximum loss in here, which is 679. So if I lose $679, I'm out. So if you're not willing to take assignment or you're not willing to roll this part out, then set your stop at the at maximum profit, which is 679, that would be my maximum loss. Okay. So I'm willing to take, I'm willing to lose 679 bucks. Okay. Anybody here not willing to lose 679? So I'm willing to lose 679 bucks on the chance that a, 93% probability of profit trade is going to work out in my favor. 93% okay. probability of profit. This is, the, this is the seller's way of life. We're going to use BP to make a bit of money and we're going to do it over and over and we're going to let theta work. And with the 112, I got this bonus. If it comes into here, who knows um, what, what can happen? I could roll the puts out and leave the debit spread on, cash that sucker in for some money, roll those puts out, uh, and I could just keep rolling those puts until the cows come home and NVIDIA finally goes over 140 and then I'm out. Okay. Once you know how to adjust, you fear nothing. Uh, all right, so it doesn't mean we're stupid, okay, but you don't really have to fear anything when you know how to adjust. 
and the more you can trade. One. All right, two more, and then I, I want to wrap up for today. Uh, and so Meta, uh, thoughts on Meta uh, here. So if I'm looking at Meta on a, I think or swim, here's Meta, obviously still in the downtrend uh, on it. So let's take a look. So where are we? So, you know, the PSR line's heading up. Are we stacked? Well, yeah, the eight is above the 21, is above the 50. The 50, though, is still pointing down. Can it bounce off the 21 and go higher? Yes, but it has started to turn. Okay, squeeze is firing in here. So you, you are getting some squeeze firing on this thing, but the CCI is coming down below the 100 and STOMO is rolling over. I'm really afraid of this thing rolling over on, on Meta. I think the lows are in for the year. So I think if you're selling or doing something in here, I'm probably put selling in meta. And if I'm put selling or, you know, if you want to, let's, let's walk through. I hope this is useful uh, for you guys, but uh, all right. So how would I trade meta? Um, what I might do in meta here is it's starting to roll, but squeeze is firing. That's a contradiction. So who knows where it's going to go. If you look at the weekly, it looks like it's getting ready to rock and roll on the weekly. So it's got an upward bent to it. So how do you, how do you trade it? There's a bunch of different ways. If it was going up more as opposed to rolling over right now, I'd consider a broken wing butterfly, but I don't like to set, put those on on something that's rolling over. But a put spread is a possibility. But if I went to a put spread, I could log somewhere out. Let's just go around in one standard deviation and create this. So uh, what do we see here? Would you make 63 on 438? As long as this is to me, I'm looking for 10% on these. Okay. I want to get a 10% profit or so. And, you know, pretty close on that. Could you go out a little further? You're a little more nervous. Yeah, I'm still pretty close to 10% in 30 days. If my and I close this at a 50% winner. So I'm going to close at a 50% winner, which means I'm going to make 5% on this trade in 30 days. I'm going to risk that. No, and my stop is 2x. If your stop loss on these is, you know, let, let's say I want to make, let's say I want to make $200 on this trade. Now let's say I want to make 300 bucks on this trade. I'm going to, you know, would you risk 600 to make a buck fifty, would you risk it there? So I want to make two hundred dollars on this trade. So I'm risking eight forty if I'm stopped out. Eight forty is less than one percent of my of my of my portfolio. In fact, when I'm doing these types of trades, when I'm doing these credit spreads, I like to stick to a half a percent. Okay, so I want to be a half a percent loss so what's a half a half a percent of my account right now of two hundred fifteen thousand dollar account half a percent and why did that is a thousand dollars okay so a thousand dollars i don't know why i couldn't have done it in my head but it's getting late in the day uh so i'm risking i'm willing to risk a thousand dollars all right so maybe i'll go to my, you know, looking for a credit of five hundred dollars. My, if I a two x loss, I'd lose a thousand bucks, which is my my 0.5 percent loss on these types of trades. Yeah, would you put this on potentially? Now, is one fifty one forty five? Does that seem like a smart move? Let's look. What's the low of the year? It's one fifty four twenty five. So 150 puts me below the low on something where the weekly is completely reversed positive, is moving up stochastic momentum, is moving up from way oversold, trying to get positive, MACD moving up. So weekly looks fantastic. Daily, eh, I don't know. Uh, but if you wanted to make the play on Meta, that would be something I would consider. Um, you can sell naked puts, you could do whatever. Uh, is it a one, one, two trade um, as well? Um, maybe, but you know, 
this is just telling me that who the heck knows what the heck this thing is going to do. Yeah, Igor put it there. Yeah, it's in the no man zone. I absolutely agree. I mean, it's what we just it's what we just looked at here is we are in the no man zone. This is turning over. Okay, this is turning over. Momentum is coming out. MACD is reversing. This is crossing negative. This is crossing negative. Even though the weeklies are up, every, you know, of the, you know, one, two, three, four, out of five things I'm looking at, four of them say it's going down. So uh, is, uh, would you buy something where four of the five indicators, the only indicator going up, four of the five indicators are telling you that this is not a good, that this is not something to be in. Uh, so, you know, Igor is saying daily will drive the weekly. Um, yeah, I just like them to be in concert. So I want whatever one's doing, the other one has to do. If the weekly is going positive, I'm waiting for the daily to go positive because if the daily goes positive while the weekly is positive, man, that's a good setup. Uh, so I like them both to be working for me um, on it. And then the last two things here was, let's do one more and let's look at, somebody wanted to look at, at uh, Zillow. So let's take a quick look at Zillow. <laughs> I These things, I didn't even move these. Does Zillow, look like a bullish chart to, to to anybody here. I didn't even move these indicators. I'm just, I left them on from Meta, okay? Man, this does not look good. Now, would you sell a bear call spread? Very possibly, I would. I'd consider it, although you could get, because weekly is all turning up, uh, but you could get a reversal and move higher and whack you, but it's the same. I could, you know how many start, start you know, stocks look the same? Let's look at Twilio. Does that look the same? Let's look at Shop. Does that look the same? Let's look at DraftKings. <laughs> Does that look, the, look, I don't even have to move my indicators on any of these charts. Let's look at, uh, let's look at Costco. Does that look the same? Now, Costco doesn't look the same, okay? Costco is moving up. Bollinger Bands are opening. Squeeze looks like it may be ready to go. MACD is, so Costco is one that's actually going the other way, as, as well as Walmart is going the other way. So there's a handful of them going the right way, but here's Netflix. Does Netflix look like it fits the same thing? Yeah. Does Google look like it? And maybe, maybe, uh, it's not looking great. Microsoft, does Microsoft look like it? No, it hasn't turned over as bad yet um, as some of the other ones do. Does Amazon look this way? Yes, it does. Okay, so there you go. Uh, lots of stuff for everybody to think of here, but it's funny that you could look at most stocks out there right now um, and they all look the same. They, they all look really bad on a short-term basis. And this one's already, I mean, some of these have already just gone. Um, you know, the time to exit was there. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna roll today. Hopefully this answers a lot of questions and we'll uh, be back with you guys at an, another time. So I appreciate everybody jumping on today. Good stuff. And we'll catch you guys all later. Thanks, Tom. See you guys.